Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my Grand Exchange only account. Now in the last episode I finally reached my main goal of 1000 total level and at that point I had a bit of a decision on my mind, do I keep going or do I just stop at my original goal of 1000? Now after some reflecting I decided that I was actually still enjoying the series and I wanted to go forward with it. Now my current goal going forward is to reach 1500 total level at which point the series will be definitively done. Now 1500 is going to be quite a challenge and to have any chance of accomplishing that we had to expand our area slightly. So on top of having access to the Grand Exchange we also now have access to the Varrock Palace as well as the POH. We now have access to different training methods, a few different skills to train, different money making methods and a whole lot of new content. Anyway guys I really hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. Now with the addition of the Varrock Palace we got access to a few different things including access to the farming skill because there actually is a tree patch here. Uh, we have access to our POH which means we now have access to construction and we also have access to a few better training methods for example the oak trees and the palace guards. For the astute observer you may have calculated that even if I get 99 in pretty much all of my skills that only brings me up to like 1600 total levels and that would require me to get pretty well 99 combat on guards. 99 wood cutting, 99 farming, 99 smithing, 99 prayer, pretty much everything would have to be maxed. While not technically impossible, that would be an immense undertaking. However, I do have one secret method in my back pocket here that I think will really make things a lot more realistic and speed things up. Now that is going to be thieving. Now training thieving is going to be quite interesting. Yes, there are things I can thieve within the Varrock Palace, those being the Varrock Guards and the Warrior Women. However, one big problem is they actually have a thieving requirement of 25 and there's nowhere else I can actually trim a thieving within the area I have unlocked. However, with that said, there's actually one extremely strange way I'm able to trim my thieving and it involves the POH. In the treasure room of a POH, you can actually build a dungeon door. At level 74 I can build the oak dungeon door which is actually a popular training method but one really interesting thing about it is you're actually able to pickpocket it for 10 thieving experience and wouldn't you know you can actually do that at level 1 thieving. Uh, so that is really going to be my first main goal in the new area and that's going to be unlocking the thieving skill and oak dungeon doors. Now currently we are working on 71 construction. Uh, we technically only need 71 because we can get a plus 3 boost from the POHT. Uh, right now we're just about to hit level 50 construction which is a pretty awesome milestone normally although for my account I'm not really sure if we're going to be able to use the portal chamber very much. The only teleportation method I think could be kind of useful is the ornate jewelry box because then we could use the ring of wealth teleports. Other than that I'm not quite sure yet but honestly I haven't explored everything yet. The POH just has so much to offer, so many potentially useful things are in it so I'm excited to level it up. Oh there we go guys another genie random event. These things are a lot more common right now because well I'm not stuck in that one center bit of the Grand Exchange so often. We're going to check that of course onto Hunter. We are level 2 Hunter so levels should be coming pretty quickly now. Quickly being relative I guess. <laughs> so there is 59 wood cutting. We have been chopping these oak logs for a while now. Over twice as quick and way more AFK. I will definitely take that. As well as we got a U seed from one of the bird nests. That's always nice. Now because I do have access to the Varrock Palace, not only is there a chance I could complete a beginner clue, I think there's also a very small chance that an easy clue could be completable. So we may shoot for that eventually. So finally after many hours we have reached 61 wood cutting uh, which is a really awesome level because we now have access to the Dragon Axe as well as the Infernal Axe. And the Infernal Axe is actually something that I might consider using. The only problem right now is the smoldering stones is incredibly expensive thanks to Temporos but maybe if we have some extra cash in the future might consider buying it. However for now we're just going to go ahead and purchase the Dragon Axe which is a really awesome upgrade I've been looking forward to for a long time now. Once we can equip it too we'll be able to use the special attack uh, but for now we'll just have to leave it in the inventory. Now one thing I need to remember are my farm runs. I only have access to one patch which means every time I forget it's kind of a big deal. Uh, right now we're only doing oak saplings and the experience is pretty bad but once we get up to 27 we can switch over to 
Willows, which is going to speed things up a lot. Now, while I've been planning things out, I've been AFK woodcutting. We're going to be up to 62 woodcutting now, but I think it's probably about time I test out one of the biggest new pieces of content I have access to, and that is the Varrock Palace. Now, the Varrock Palace has one major thing that I am so excited for, and that is a decent monster to fight. For the last six months, I've been killing imps. Uh, killing imps was extremely slow, they didn't have much HP, they didn't really spawn in very large numbers, and the experience rates were just really bad. However, now that we have access to the Varrock Palace, we actually have a reasonable way to train up our combat stats. Still not a very good training method, and going all the way to 99 would be quite a pain, but still notably better. Now because we actually are fighting something that can kind of fight back, we had to upgrade to some rune gear. We can't wear a rune plate body, but we can of course wear a full rune with a rune chain body. Once we get more money, we're going to try to upgrade maybe to obsidian at a certain point. The monsters here are actually strong enough that getting better gear will actually probably make a difference on our experience per hour. Training here is actually lightning quick. We're already up to 44 strength and we are getting around 22k experience per hour. Uh, which is like four times better than imps. I can't even begin to explain how much better this is. So for now, I just wanted to get a bit of testing done on the new training method. After an hour of testing, we are getting around 20k per hour. That's very good information to know, and we can plan accordingly on what methods I think are going to give us the most total levels in the shortest amount of time. Oh man, I keep forgetting about this tree, but well, we remembered it today at least. There is 22 farming. Still got a long way to go though. <laughs> Alright, there is another farming level coming in here, and actually kind of an interesting one. That is 23 farming, which means we can now make a Scarecrow. Now, originally I thought I would actually be able to use the Scarecrow as a consistent training method. However, to make one, I actually need a Hay Bale, which I don't think I have access to. So another pretty notable construction level coming in here, that is going to be 55 construction. Now, I've kind of got the method down reasonably well. We're getting around 150k per hour construction experience. Uh, which means at the rate we're going to get to 71 will take me probably around 3 to 5 hours, just depending on efficiency. So about an hour later and we are now at 60 construction. Only around 10 more levels to go until we can finally unlock our next big goal, which is thieving. I'm kind of just breezing through these levels. I'm sure there are a few other useful unlocks that we've already skipped through. But we'll have a look at it after and see what other secrets may lie in our cozy little house. There is 24 farming. Well guys, construction is very expensive, so today we're really going to focus on trying to earn back some money. I mean, right now I don't even know if I have enough money to get all the way to 71 construction. Maybe I do, but I'd probably bankrupt myself. So we're going to be trying out a couple interesting money makers today. Uh, one of those actually is going to involve dismantling Zalra items. Right now there is a huge volatility in the market for Zalra, and we're going to try to take advantage of that by dismantling some of the unique rewards. So for every Zalra item that we dismantle, we're getting around 50k in profit. On top of that, we're buying some items that we can high out while we're waiting. I found a really good deal on Black Di Van Braces. I think 200 GP on, so that's amazing right there. That's like 100k in profit just alking some random item. Another method we're going to be doing today is actually just creating toxic blowpipes. There's actually a good margin just from crafting the Tanzanite Fang, uh, so we're going to try that as well. I mean, we're just kind of trying a bit of everything. Okay, so overall today, I think we probably made somewhere between 500k and a million profit just from doing odd job money makers. Sure, it's not a lot of money, but every little bit helps out. As construction, of course, is just a giant money pit. So while we were waiting for money making methods to come through, on the side, I was actually creating magic longbows. Minorly profitable, but more importantly, there is level 97 fletching. Really, really exciting there. That means we only have two more levels to go until we have maxed the skill. At this point, that'll probably be our second 99 on the account, which is really awesome. I mean, we're getting pretty close on a couple of skills and just having like multiple different 99s in such a small area, I think is going to be pretty damn cool. I really wasn't planning on rushing fletching, but at this point, we are so close that I might consider just banging it out just to have. I mean, look at all those longbows we just ended up doing. I think we did like 15,000 just in the last day or two. However, today we're going to be switching it up a bit. Something very AFK that I'm going to be doing is creating dodgy necklaces. Uh, right now there's a profit of around, I think, 600 GP per necklace I enchant. So we're going to try that out. Alright, so it did take me a long time to enchant all 3,000 of these. Probably around 5 hours and that was going to spread out to over a day or two. So now when I started, the price of dodgy necklaces were around 
1200, 1300 each. I do believe they've dropped a little bit, but I think we're gonna make at least some money anyway. Okay, so right now they are unfortunately only worth 985 GP. That kind of sucks. Uh, all right, we'll dump them in here for 1039 and just try to be patient. There we go, another farming level coming in here. That is gonna be 25 farming. Only a couple more to go until we can finally plant a willow sapling, which will give us like three times more experience, which is gonna be pretty nice. Now, I can't say I've been making a ton of money, but we did manage to sell all of the dodgy necklaces for 1,039, which means we probably made around six or 700K on that. Not amazing, but it was pretty AFK. Now that in combination with a ton of magic longbows I've been making and just bolt enchanting, bolt creating, we have managed to make ourselves a bit of money. And I think actually finally enough money to be able to afford 71 construction. Now to afford that, we're gonna need roughly 8,600 oak planks, which will be an additional 4 million GP. Expensive for sure, but we need to do it eventually. And this will hopefully unlock a brand new skill. Currently we can go through like around 2,000 every hour, so it's gonna take a while, but let's get started. So after quite a while of construction, there we go guys, that is our last construction level for now at least. 71 construction, which means with a plus 3 boost, we are now able to build the oak door, which is something I've been working towards for a couple of days now. Oh yeah, something else that happened while I was training construction is we finally reached level 27 farming. We can now finally plant our very first new tree, and that is going to be a willow sapling. Now the way this works is we just have to eat a garden pie, plant a tree, and then we're good to go. Even if we're level 27 farming, we can still check the health on the tree once it's fully grown, uh, which is very handy. Now we have some upgrading to do in our POH. First up here, and probably one of the most expensive things, is we need to build the Teak Shelves 2, I think, to be able to get a plus 3 boost. Unfortunately, that costs 300k just for the gold leaves. Kind of expensive, but of course it is cheaper than just getting 3 construction levels. Now to accompany that, we're also going to need a sink as well as a oven of some sort. Of course, we're gonna go for the highest level one because it looks pretty damn cool. And finally here, we need to build a dungeon, which I believe has to go underground. I've never built a dungeon before, so I guess we just go for dungeon? No. Now, after a little bit of research, I figured out that you need to build either a skill hall or a quest hall. And in that spot, you can actually build a staircase. So we're gonna build a spiral staircase, which hopefully will spiral downwards, although it doesn't look like it is. The stairs don't lead to anywhere, god damn it. Uh, so after a little more research, I think we have pretty well everything figured out. We have the construction boost, we have the planks, we have the dungeon, I think we should be good to go. So in our dungeon, there are door spots, and within the door spot, we can build a oak door at level 74 construction, and the oak door you're actually able to pick lock for thieving experience. So let's go ahead and build a door. So we need to drink the tea to get to 74, and then build in the build spot, build the oak door, and there we go, guys. We now have our first new training method in quite a while. Apparently the door is not locked. How in the hell do you actually lock your door? Okay, so I tried a bunch of different things, including coming in with an alt account to determine whether or not either of the accounts could pick lock it. Nothing is working, so we're gonna actually go ahead and get one more construction level. Uh, my next theory is maybe it has to be an oak door leading to your treasure room. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Locking in your treasure. Okay, so we got 72 construction now. That costs another like 900k. We built a treasure room, which cost a fair bit of money. And now we just have to build another oak door. And hopefully this one we can pick lock. Uh, still not locked. God damn it. 
All right, guys, I think I'm just an idiot. I tried to figure this out for like three hours yesterday. And of course, when you get really frustrated with the game and what answers, you tweet at Mod Ash. Thankfully, because it's Mod Ash, he delivered the correct information in a very timely manner. Thank you very much, sir. I very, <laughs> you are truly a god among men. Now the issue was, I wasn't actually setting challenge mode. If your house is not into challenge mode, you can't actually pick lock the, god damn it. I was 100% certain that was it. Okay, there is one last thing I can try here. I need to maybe set PVP challenge mode. If this doesn't work, I might cry. Oh, thank God it actually worked. There we go, guys. 10 thieving experience from pick locking the door. That's a beautiful sight, guys. There was our very first thieving level on the account to thieving. And there is a very specific place that it can actually pick lock here, which makes it extremely easy. The door is really weird. Sometimes it will just get stuck for some reason. No clue how to fix that, but you know what? This is working pretty well. And I believe I just have to get to level 25 thieving and then I never have to do this again. So thankfully, I think I only have to pick lock this thing like a thousand times. Anyway guys, that is probably where I'm gonna leave it for today. This week we did unlock a few pieces of really interesting new content. We found a very unique workaround to be able to unlock the thieving skill for us going forward. We gained a massive amount of construction experience which not only unlocked us thieving, but uh, one thing I didn't really mention is we now have access to a gilded altar, uh, which is going to drastically improve our cost efficiency for prayer. And that will hopefully get us well on our way to 1500 total level. Uh, this week we are ending the episode at 1107 total levels, which means we have just a bit under 400 total levels to go. Now I have updated the goal sheet a little bit here to reflect our future goals. This week we did actually manage to get 1100 so we can knock that off our goal list. We've added a few other things on here such as 99 fire making, 99 fletching, crafting herb lore, prayer construction, and magic, as well as the completion of any clue scroll. Uh, so I'm really excited to work towards those goals and I will be seeing you in the next episode. Now, before I go here, guys, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A giant thank you to Brian Robinson, Cappy, Colin Corley, Timothy Chen, Guy Fox, Valhalla Lad, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon tier of YouTube membership. Thank you guys so much, as always. Also, a big shout out to Clack Clack, Need My Pills, Branton Griffin, All Things Gaming, Birdbot, and Base Titch for all being subscribed at the Brunette tier. Once again, a giant thank you. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in the end credits of all my future videos, get access to my video release schedule, and get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.